Hey guys, so I got a couple requests on making a how-to deck building video, so that is what this is gonna be. So obviously, if you guys played this game already, and you guys know everything about this game, this video is not exactly for you, but feel free to watch anyway. So when you start to build a deck, the four things you really have to pay attention to is what your main character is gonna be, the synergy of the deck, the colors that you're gonna use in your deck, and the support. So, starting off, you have to choose your main character. That's going to be pretty important. So, your main character has to satisfy, satisfy a few of these requirements. They have to have a level 1 form, and they have to be able to class change, notably. So, in order for you to have a reliable main character, if it doesn't level up to anything stronger than about 60 to 70, then you're going to have some issues uh, later on in the game. So, as you can see, we're going to be using Hannah for our deck this um, tutorial. So Hannah has a level 1. The level 1 is a pretty good card. Um, usually the level 1's you want to try to aim for 1 with uh, 40 attack and then for our class change version it needs to be about 60 to 70, preferably 70 attack. So although level 1's are pretty important, they're not going to be the main focus of the deck. You got to look at the level 3 effects and then try to abuse the level 3 effects throughout the deck. So um, looking at Hannah, her, her first effect allows you to reveal the top five cards of your deck, and then if there's a henna among them, um, add it to your hand when you evade. So evading, as you know, is when you discard a copy of yourself, right? And then uh, the attack is blocked. So this allows this deck to have a very good defense. Uh, so when you block cards, you're going to try to get more hannas to your hand. And in order for you to block cards, you have to have hannas in your hand to start with, right? So once per turn, you want to try to trigger this effect when possible. Her second effect is a class change effect, but since she's, she's going to be your main character, she's always going to have that class change effect. There's no other way for you to get a level 3 Hannah on the field. And that effect is that when you have a level 3 unit on the field, other than herself of course, she gains 10 attack. So she's going to uh, reach that 70 base attack that you're going to really be looking for when you're building a deck. So how many copies of Hannah do you actually want to use? So copies of main character is kind of up to your preference because there's a balance between how many you want to use and how many is too much. Because if you use too little, then you're not going to have enough to evade and you, or, or do critical hits. But if you have too much, then when you mill them, your supports will fail. For my decks, the magical number that I found is around 7 to 8. So of course there's going to be exceptions to this, like for Ike and stuff, you're going to be using more than that because of how the deck works. But so we're going to have one copy of Hannah. So this isn't going to count uh, towards one of the copies of hand in your deck just because this card's going to be on the field and you're not going to be able to have it for drawing or evading or anything. So yeah, we're going to have one Hannah and then so we're going to try to max out the amount of Hannahs in this deck and sadly there are only two options for that. So we have, we're have we going to have more level 1s and more level 3s. Having this amount of Hannahs in your deck will allow you to block which is really really important especially in this deck. And it also allows you to do critical hits, and then also keep your milling of the same card to a minimum. Next, we're going to talk about synergy. So synergy in a card game is how well cards work together. So in this Hannah deck, you want to look for cards that are going to be level 3, and that it's going to uh, let you get Hannah's to your hand easily, so you can trigger her blocking effect as many times as possible within that game. And here are some cards that do just that. So we're going to have level 1 Asama, uh, Subaki, and we're going to have um, Takumi from our white team. So having the, so first of all, Asama, his effect allows you to flip one bond when it kills a card to add one level 1 from your graveyard to your hand. So the flip one bond is really important because you want to be able to minimize how much uh, cost you're going to be using to get these Hannahs back. So with his effect, you can get back your level 1 Hannahs that you milled to the graveyard, and then from there, you have a card from your hand which allows you to mill more, and it's like a little cycle. And it's a pretty cheap effect, and it's going to be effective. So um, we're considering him. Uh, we have um, our Subaki. So his effect is similar to Hannahs, and that allows you to send cards to the graveyard um, whenever something happens. So his is actually when you crit. and. Yeah, you can send cards to the graveyard, and then if you have a Tsubaki within those cards, you can add it to your hand. It's a pretty good card, it kind of works with this deck. And then we have Takumi, so his effect is similar to Hannah's in that he gains attack when there's a level 3 on the field. And then from our red team, we can also look towards these two cards. 
So, Lena, as you know, she lets you get cards from the graveyard pretty easily when you play a level 1, and you can add a level 1 to your hand. So, kind of like Asama, you can get your level 1 Hannahs to your hand. And then for um, Keita, Sheeta, whatever, um, you can use, a, it's a similar effect, except she's from the deck when you kill something. So, yeah, as you can see, you want to try to get cards that let you get the level 1 Hannahs as cheap as possible and as often as possible. And then other cards we can look at are Elise, because she has a great retrieval effect um, at the start of your turn. It's pretty cost effective. And then we also have Tiki, which, lets you, which can allow you to get Hannahs back from your bond if you needed to. So all these cards work pretty well with the deck, but you need to consider what two colors you're going to use. So ideally, I think two colors is usually the best because it keeps things simple and it allows you to be more consistent with your plays. But you can also use three colors, but just for this deck, uh, this deck that we're making, we're going to be using two colors. So what cards do we have most colors from that we're going to get uh, net the most benefit of using them? And I think for this deck, we're going to be using white and red. And of course, that's going to lead us to our next requirement, the color options. So looking at colors, we can see which cards are going to be benefiting us the most. And then we're going to try to select the rest of the cards in this deck based around those two colors. So now I'm going to look through my cards and then we're going to see which cards work well with Hannah. So we're going to have some red cards and we're going to have some white cards, right? Um, some people are asking me if you need to have a certain amount of balance within how many red cards you use and how many white cards you use, so do you need to be like 50-50 or 60-40? And the answer kind of is no, you don't really need a balance, because the less red cards you have, the less requirements you'll have to have red cards in your bond to play red cards, because you'll have less in your hand. So ideally, you don't want to have just like four red cards or eight red cards. You want to have slightly more than that. So try to aim for at least, I'd say, 12 to 16. Uh, that's like the minimum you want to have. But yeah, there's no real requirement of how many red cards you need. And to fulfill our last requirement of the things we need to look for is support. So in a deck, of course, the support the higher the support, the better the deck is going to be, right? So you want to balance how well the cards work in the deck along with their supports. So cards like Tsubaki, like we talked about earlier, fits this deck perfectly because it has 30 support and it has it's a level 3 and it works really well, um, its effect works really well with Hannah's. So having Tsubaki in the deck is a no-brainer. Um, 20 supports are also good. You want to have a good amount of 20 supports. And then cards like Navar, which could potentially work really well with the deck, having an effect that allows you to discard a Navar to um, make his attack unavoidable. It's a pretty good card, but it has 10 support. So you can consider using Navar in your deck, but um, having a, being a 10 support, you need to know that whenever you mill him, the chances are you're gonna lose that battle. So after some consideration, this is the deck I came up with. So with our Hannah, we got our main character one, of course, and then we got three more copies of the level one Hannah. We're gonna move that to the side. And then we're gonna use, of course, four copies of the level three Hannah. So for the main character, the card you want to be on the field most often, in this case, are level three. You wanna use four copies of that because that's the one you're gonna keep on the field for the longest time. For a Kron deck, um, or a Marth deck or something, the main card you want to keep on the field is a level 4 Marth, not the level 5. So you want to use 4 copies of the level 4 Marth, and say 1 or 2 copies of the level 5 if you want to use it. And then next, we're going to be using 4 copies of Tsubaki, and then 4 copies of the other Tsubaki. So, let's put this over here first, four, you got 4 copies of that. And then we're going to use four copies of this. And now you're asking me, why do I have a card face down? So this is called a proxy. We're right here. And a proxy is pretty much a card that you don't have, or you want, but you want to test out. And you want to be able to put something as an indicator that that's the card you want to test out. So usually you want to put a slip of paper in there that has the name on it. Or, so right now, if I were to put a slip of paper in there, it'd say like Subaki 3, right? because it's my level 3 Tsubaki. And this is a really good tool for testing out decks because um, it means you don't have to invest in the card um, that, you, that you don't have, of course, if you, or else you're gonna spend money on it when you realize the card isn't that good in your deck. So having a proxy allows you to test the deck with that card without actually having the card. And then, of course, if the card is actually that good, you can invest in it. I mean, Tsubaki's not really that expensive. I just don't have another one on hand right now, but yeah. 
And then next, we're gonna have our priests. So, I usually like running at least two copies of a priest in the deck because this allows you to get Hannah early on if you need to. All the other cards we're going to be using is only going to get our level 1 Hannah, and that's a problem because if we mill her and we don't have her in our hand earlier on, how are we going to get the level 3 to our hand? We can't. So Sakura is the ideal card for this deck because if you, even if you have a Hannah on the field, you can play her just early on and then the level 1 Hannah will gain 10 attack when you have a Sakura on the field. So this satisfies our priest requirement. She is 20 support. And of course, the little synergy thing going on with Hannah. And next off, we have our level 3 Asama. So already, like I said, he gives range to the deck. And that's one of the things we sort of have to note, that this deck isn't going to have a lot of range. So whatever cards have range is going to be pretty important. So he has range um, if you flip one bond face down. Ideally, you don't want to do that too often, but he has that option if you need it. And also, he gets Hannah's back. So, pretty important card, and he's 20 support, so he's not going to be that 10 support that you're going to regret having to mill. And now, the rest of the cards we're going to have in this deck is purely going to be based on the support. So we're going to have our uh, Emma, so her effect is going to allow us to move cards around, and most importantly, 30 support. And then we're also going to have 4 copies of Shigure, and 4 copies of our other Shigure. So, um, Shigure's level 3 is a level 3, so it's gonna help Hannah gain her 10 attack. And then also, it's 30 support, and has an effect that allows you to move things around, and it prevents uh, decks like Marth that move your decks, move your cards around, um, from working as well with Shigure in the field. So it's a pretty important card in every white deck, I believe, so that's why we're gonna use those cards. And now, that is all our white cards, and we are going to move on to our red cards. So next, we have Lena. So, I talked to her about her already. She is going to be working really well with this deck, uh, getting back our level 1 Hannahs. And then next, we're going to have some more 30 supports. So we're going to have a, uh, 4 copies of level 1 Kata. Um, yeah, 30 support. She can allow you to boost cards if you really need to, but she's mainly just going to be there for that 30 support. And of course, she's going to be the level 1 version of this 4 copies of level 4 Kata that we're going to use. Really important card, you know, helps you get Hannah's back to your hand from your deck if you need to. So yeah, works well with the deck, and she's 30 support. Cards that work well in 30 support are mainly going to be what you're looking for when you're building a deck. It's really important. And then last, we're going to have 2 copies of Tiki. So this deck, we're going to be flipping uh, one bond down every turn at least to try to get Hannah's back to your hand, right? So Tiki is going to have you help you get a lot of um, the bonds back during late game. So we're going to be use two, using two copies of her, and she's a red card, so it kind of rounds everything up. So the red cards we're using uh, right now are 10. So some of you might think that's a little too little, but I think it'll be okay. So now that you have your whole deck laid out in front of you, some last moment things you need to do is to make sure that there is 50 cards in front of you. So go ahead and count your deck. And if there are 50 cards, then you have met the final requirement that you need for building a deck. So the last thing you need to do after that is obviously to test the deck. Keep in mind the things, the decisions you've made and how well those are actually working in real life. Because sometimes when you make a deck, you can think that, oh, this card's gonna be really, really good in this deck, and then when you play it, you realize it's not actually that great. So those are the cards you need to take out and swap in with other cards, and then just try to find that perfect deck that you're gonna have in mind, and then if it works well for you, that is the deck you wanna keep. So, thank you guys for watching, and I really hope this video helped all those newcomers to this game learn how to build their first deck or refine the deck that they have made already. See you guys next time. Bye!